Um, hello, Nicole. Thank you for joining me. Yeah. All right. Um, well, um, I guess my CRPS journey started um, when I was 10. Um, that's when my initial injury occurred. Um, yeah. And I had uh, kicked my dad to the shin um, as we were wrestling. Um, and that's um, when I kind of, they thought I maybe fractured my foot. Um, and so um, I guess the, this is at the biggest age of 10. thing that kind of, yeah, yeah, wow. I was 10 years old. And um, I guess the, the biggest thing that kind of was, I guess, alerted everyone is that there was just a lot of pain, just an excruciating amount of pain. Um, yeah. You know, I instantly just fell to my knees in a lot of pain. And I'm not really someone that was affected by pain or would be upset by pain. Um, I had migraines from the age of eight. Um, and so other than that, I would just kind of like rub off. I was very much like a tough person and I played a lot yeah. of sports and really just wasn't affected by that kind of stuff. So, um, and I don't think we went to urgent care or the doctor or anything like that right away. I um, mean, it wasn't till later in the night, I think the middle of the night and I was just crying all night. Um, so finally we went into the doctor and they're like, oh, this is probably a fracture. Um, so um, right away, they just told me I needed to stay off my foot and that was probably what it was. Um, mm -hmm. And um, with with that, with staying off of my foot is when things just got worse. And um, so I would stay off of it for about six weeks and then I would go through physical therapy. And with physical therapy, I guess, is when I would start to get better. And I didn't yeah. have the typical symptoms of CRPS, like swelling or hair growth or hair loss or nail, um, yeah you know, nail thickness or anything like that. Um, Sometimes or, so the there was, different symptoms can take a while to come through. They're not always instant as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so I really didn't have any of that um, for years. I didn't have any of yeah. those symptoms. Okay. Um, so I, I mean, that definitely made it harder for doctors to pick up on. Um, so really other than excruciating pain, abnormal pain for sure because it really that's what they said is it really didn't fit the injury I was having to have that much pain because I should have been able they had expected me to bear weight within a few weeks and yeah. it shouldn't have been the amount of pain I was having for that injury um and um so they were a little confused as to why I was having that kind of reaction and they did um eventually do um i think it was kind of i think a bone density scan with dye and um that was something that alerted them that what what should happen when you have a break is um so i i guess all the dye should go to where your injury is because it's uh mm -hmm. all the i don't want to speak incorrectly but i i think um basically what's happening is like blood what uh you know the bone marrow is kind of trying to re reform and heal and everything so that's why the dye uptake should go to that area um and that wasn't happening actually none of the dye got absorbed in that area and that kind of told them that something was really wrong and they mm -hmm. referred me out to a specialist and the specialist kind of no noticed that um, my foot was almost a purple color and uh, that's that's when I first got my diagnosis. And then he actually realized how severe it was and that the purple kind of went up my entire leg. And this actually was um, not till I was about, I want to say around the age of 13. Um, yeah. So it took about three years, m many, many, many doctors, many specialists. And I, I want to say I was probably, I was casted many times, put in boots, crutches, um, many cycles, six weeks on crutches, stay off of it, physical therapy, um, like just no one knew what was happening. No one believed yeah. me. Um, lots of bullying, um, teachers calling me crippled, um, not getting wow. excused from PE, uh, pretty much lost all my friends as a child. Um, wow. It was definitely a really hard time. Um, yeah, and, especially you know, for for that age 
you know what I mean? Yeah. To do it at any age, but for a child, I mean, a child's innocent to, you know, the ways of hardships of life, you know? They're supposed yeah, to be innocent um, from it anyway. Yeah, and, and in a lot of ways, it's I think it's easier for children to understand that, you know, something's like, oh, you broke your leg and it'll heal. But when, you know, I think once I got the diagnosis, I think things almost got harder because when, when I understood that things were broken and I, I could go back to my sport or I could go back to what I like. But um, mm -hmm. once I got my diagnosis, actually the doctor pulled the crutches out of my hand and said, you have two choices. You can walk out of this doctor's office on your two feet or I can hospitalize you. Um, so at that point it was that severe and he said that, you know, if, if you choose to keep using crutches, you will lose your leg. Like it will not work and you will lose yeah. all function. And, um, so he took my crutches away and, uh, hobbled out of the office, but obviously that was just the beginning of everything. And I mean, that, during that period, I, I'm not sure that around that age is when things I think got harder because it didn't. It was, it was only the beginning of finding out what was happening yeah. and um, him and I remember vividly like him and my mom went out and talked away from me and kind of like what this really meant. Um, and a lot yeah. of it, that's kind of how things were is that a lot of it wasn't explained to me and wasn't told to me in, in full detail. Um, yeah. And at the age of 13, I, I, you should I have been able to comprehend most of it, you know? 13 year olds are I, quite advanced. These I mean, I understand days that now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's heavy. So I understand that now that it definitely would have been hard for a child to understand that. But at the same time, I was never, when we went home, I was never like then told by my mom and dad, like, this is what's going on, you know, from like mm -hmm. for a child. Like, so um, then we, we went and sought out some specialists. Um, so we went to Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, um, and and I was actually like patient one, <laughs> you know, like like it, I was in their early stages of ever having someone with CRPS as a child. So yeah. um, they they were great doctors, um, but they just didn't know what they were doing yet, and um, so unfortunately, yeah. I really didn't get the treatment I needed for another few years. Um, and it wasn't until I went to UCLA Pediatric Center um, for pain where I really got a great team of specialists um, and they, they deal with everything on a team approach. So they have monthly meetings where they all sit around the table and talk about each patient, which is great. And um, um, I worked with um, a psychologist and um, physical therapist and just a ton of people. And I was involved in studies and lots of different things, but um, probably the number one thing that made a, the biggest difference in my care was the physical therapist that I had because she was trained in CRPS for children. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she's still involved in my care today. She's one yeah. of, she's probably made the biggest difference in my treatment. Um, but definitely like not being accepted from my peers and teachers yeah. at like that critical age was, was definitely hard. Um, sure. it was, it was definitely a really hard thing to go to and to go through. And, um, yeah, that, that yeah. was, that was so, I mean, to, definitely. To hear it from teachers, that was quite a surprise. I mean, I know that they're still yeah. human as well, um, and I guess we're going back a few years, and um, I think uh, people in society are a lot more open today to, to new possibilities than what they were, you know, 15 years ago, whatever it is. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, you know, we have changes as a whole, but no, that's still yeah. quite surprising even for the, you know, this day and age, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, think we talk about disability openly now and what disability can mean and does mean and then all of that stuff and, you know, what's politically correct and all of that. Yeah. But I, I, at the same time, like when I look back and I think like, wow, I had teachers calling me gimp and crippled and all of yeah. that stuff. And like, oh, oh, they weren't like just poking fun. Like that's offensive. 
and like mm -hmm. yeah that did hurt my feelings like i might have tried tried to laugh it off but like you know that was not okay no and um uh but um i guess i, I don't know i i'm someone that i guess tries to put a smile on yeah. often but i know that's not always the correct response and i i do think that's something that um in general like chronically sick people do is it's easier to put on a smile than to be yes. like no i'm actually not okay right now yeah or like uh especially like you know like family gatherings or stuff like that it's it's much harder yeah. to be like you know like actually no like i'm not great and i'd rather be laying down but it's <laughs> yeah. thanksgiving or it's it's christmas so you know whatever yeah. it is uh but um there there were definitely a lot of times where it was like yeah i i had a lot of times where like friends were what i guess what i thought were friends <laughs> um would be like poking fun i guess like or I, I i had a lot of times where i'd have like friends take my crutches or things like out from under me and it's like oh like that's not okay it's like so many different things they think about now yeah. that wouldn't be okay and i know i would stand up for myself now but it's hard to expect a child to do that yes uh, yeah especially so. in that condition you're weakened you're weakened mentally as well you know and you, just, you don't yeah. want to argue, you don't want to explain, like you said, you just put the smile on and let it pass. Yeah. yeah. Right. So did you have much support um, from home, from parents and family and stuff? How, how were they um, when you were young? I mean, they believed in what you were going through and um, they fought for you or they were a little bit yeah. unsure as well. They took some training themselves. How did that go? Um, it definitely took training. Um... I don't think that my parents really ever doubted what I was going through, yeah. but I don't know that they knew the extent of the effect it was having on me. Um, yeah. But I, I don't think they ever doubted it, um, especially because um, the my migraines were also severe and I don't I don't think like they just knew that I always wanted to be active and everything like that and I don't think they yeah. ever doubted that anything would keep me from the things I love um so I don't think that they ever doubted what I was going through but they definitely needed training as well um which um the, my doctors very much like encourage them to participate um, and to get knowledge on. Um, my mom was primarily the one that took me to all my appointments and everything yeah. um, during that time. Um, and she was really the one that did all the research during that time. And it wasn't, it's not cool. really until um, recently that my dad has become more involved in trying to learn about it. Um, but yeah, I would say my family was fairly involved. Um, That's good. Yeah, so I, I don't feel like that has ever really been an issue about them not believing yeah. my pain or believing any of it. Um, but I do think I also try to act like, oh, no, no, nothing's ever bothering me or things like that. So I definitely yeah. do try and keep it at bay just because I, I definitely did also have a lot of family issues with it. Um, I have two younger sisters and it definitely caused a lot of, um, I guess like a schism in the family, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think like with any, any disability, um, yeah. when there is a child who is sick, you, family counseling is something that is advised and that's not something we ever did, but, mm -hmm. um, and it's also not just as it wasn't ever really explained to me, it wasn't ever explained to them. So they didn't know why I was getting more attention or why I was always sick or why I yes. was at the doctor. And yeah. so that was really hard on them growing up. Um, yeah. And I mean, a, a lot of effort has, just, had to be spent on you through the parents and stuff. And it, yeah, you know, it's not by choice so that they, you're neglecting the other ones or anything. You, you needed to go to the doctors. You needed that extra care, you know. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. I, hopefully they understand more as they grow up too, you know. 
Yeah, but, no, it's yeah. not an issue. But anytime money was tight or anything, like really anything, it was just kind of like, oh, well, why doesn't why does Nicole get that or anything? It was just like mm. uh, it just they just didn't understand. And so there was just kind of like some built up resentment um, over time. It's like they just didn't understand. Um, yeah. And um you know if my mom had to sit with me or couldn't like put them to bed or whatever it was like they it was just a lot of misunderstanding and not understanding yeah. um and um i do i do think that's hard with you know when there is a child who's sick to have other family members not understand or not be informed yeah. and so you um, would then recommend yeah. that that that's something that um parents and families should do if there's a child with CRPS in the family you would recommend that you sit down together and make sure that each one of you understands as yeah best, absolutely as best you can what's happening absolutely yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely because I mean especially like I mean the ages may vary the kids are young and I think it needs to be explained not once not twice but all the time because things change yes situations yeah. change symptoms change it's a constantly evolving thing and i i don't i don't think i mean and even um you know what's going on in a school environment might need to be explained why yeah. is the does this kid need um you know assistant devices or why do they not in pe or why you know whatever the situation yeah. may be or even if they're getting bullied maybe a sibling should be looking out for them or yeah for sure responsibilities around the house why are chores being divided differently whatever it may yeah. be i think that all of that whether it needs to be done in counseling or therapy or just needs to be explained in general i do think it's important yeah. that you know the kids are talked to because it it is a change and it it may not be what they're used to and it's also probably mm -hmm. not what is happening in their friends lives yeah. and that yeah. most likely are going to get asked about it and questioned about it and they might yeah. even get bullied too and i i i think that is definitely prevalent and it's yeah. not just people and if you don't under yes, but understand it as a child how, how do you explain it when somebody asks you you know so yeah. you know if you have it no matter what age you are you need to understand it the best you can you know for sure mm -hmm. so uh, another thing that I, i'm taking from this you would recommend would be um to take your family your parents and yourself into the school and sit down with your teachers and your principal and take them a lot of paperwork uh, be an advocacy for your disorder and um teach them so that that, that your schooling life is you know a, a bit more appropriate for your condition for yeah, sure. definitely. I mean, I was I was told to get back into school as soon as possible, and that didn't yeah. mean I was excelling in school. And I think that's hard because, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. A lot of us are told that you know we can be predispositioned for a type A personality. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, you know, so if we're you know maybe used to some grade or point in school and then all of a sudden we're thrust back into school and then maybe we start not getting those grades anymore i think that our school system should be aware and either provide some accommodations or no like well this is why maybe this person is not doing this way or not able to complete all their homework or whatever mm -hmm. um for me, like one of the biggest accommodations I needed in school was that I needed it to actually be placed in an adaptive PE class. And yeah. so I was yeah. moved into a class um, where every single, instead of like, because what was happening is I was sent to the library every day to write reports and, or yeah. sitting on the sidelines for PE. And that that's not helpful, especially when I should be doing physical activity. I just can't run the mile every day. Yeah. So, yeah. um, in the adaptive PE class, it was like we could go into the weight room and use um, bands and stuff like that, and that was much more successful. And plus, being around other people with that needed, um, you know, adaptive yeah. things yeah. was helpful. Yeah. That's not assistance. a bad thing, and mm -hmm. I don't. 
I don't think asking for um, exceptions to be made is a problem, especially if oh, you can be put back into your normal environment sooner. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. I mean, um, we're, you know, we're, we're never going to be the same, and and um, yeah, allowances have to be made at home, at school, and everywhere, and everything you do, don't they? So, yeah, for sure, that's that's a very thoughtful. Yeah. Thoughtful. And I don't think any of that sure. is necessarily specific to someone with CRPS. I think that can no, be true, true of anyone yeah. going through, yeah. you know, having a child with a disability or going through something. Yeah like that you know it's like you want to get your child back into school and you know if you went if you had to do something like homeschool that's not an awful idea but that takes them mm -hmm. away from um a lot of what might have been their normal activity so yeah social you know, life as well socializing is very important um, most Absolutely. of us become withdrawn when we have um such a serious pain disorder and stuff and and to Absolutely. fight that is is probably a really good thing. So especially in a child, to give them as much of a social life as possible, before <laughs> it's you know yeah. sort of too late for them. Um, you know, once you're an adult, it's hard to make friends, and once you're an adult that's become crippled, it's <laughs> even harder again to keep your friends alone, make friends. Yeah, you Absolutely. know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So how have things gone for you in in recent years? Has um, has it progressively got worse? Um, is um, it well, reasonably stable? Um, so after I was um, seen at UCLA, we were able to somewhat manage most of my symptoms. Um, and I was able to graduate high school and college, um, keeping most of my symptoms cool. at bay, except for um, my migraines. Um, yeah. That's pretty much been um, the symptom that just really, I couldn't keep under control. Um, but then um, in 2014, um, I broke my foot and that's what um, set my CRPS in full rampant uh, again. And so since then, um, it went um, completely full body and um, pretty much from head to toe. Um, and spread internally as well. Yeah. So um, I'm no longer um, treated as a pediatric patient um, at UCLA. Now I see um, a primarily a private neurologist. Um, yeah. And um, I've recently gotten um, a feeding tube and a port placement um, because my veins aren't that great. So it's pretty much the only access I have. And I um, wow. uh, get most of my nutrition through um, my feeding tube as um, I also have gastroparesis. So um, that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, the so doctor's your body's kind of not don't... digesting the food? And you're, you're vomiting yeah, so, and, and stuff, I assume. Uh, yeah. Um, so, well, yeah. Mo yeah. So gastroparesis is just like tube. paralysis of yeah. the stomach. Yeah. So um, it basically is just like mostly undigested and can sit in my stomach for a long time. So yeah. um, it's important it that um, I get nutrients another way. So what I get in the feeding tube is an elemental formula. So it's broken down for me. So my stomach doesn't have to do the work and it actually goes into my intestines and bypasses my stomach. Yeah. So, um, I'm still able to eat. Um, um, but, uh, it, it just doesn't really, I don't get any nutrients out of it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still have an appetite? Do you get cravings for food? I can get cravings, but I guess once I take a bite of it, it doesn't taste like anything I know of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. And yeah, um, yeah. once I taste it, I'm no longer hungry at all. So yeah. um, I'd still try and eat mostly for the idea of like, my, well, my GI doesn't really like the idea of me eating, but um, I still try and eat because 
I guess in, I mean, from my understanding, if like I don't eat, then that would be like anything else with CRPS where like I would just lose it. Yeah. And then, like if you, yeah. if you don't, you if you don't use keep, it, you lose yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah, I get you. You need um, to keep up that kind of routine and keep your body trying to accept it and forcing, you know, yeah. understand. Yeah. So, um, basically what they've, they don't want me to eat too much or kind of my stomach can get irritated and um, stuff like that. And I'm also not tolerating my feeding tube too well. So okay. th they don't want me to eat too much, but um, I do try and continue to eat. But um, how long has, has this been? How long have you had this stuff, the feeding tube and the port and that? Um, the feeding tube, I've had about six weeks, I think, and the pour, I've had about, uh, well, I've had the a pour for like five months, maybe, but I just got it replaced um, yeah. about 10 days ago because it stopped working randomly. Um, usually yeah. ports can last years. Um, for some reason, mine stopped working, and the problem was that um my i formed scar tissue over it um oh. called fibrin um and she doesn't actually she's never that my surgeon said they've never had seen someone had it happen that fast yeah um so we're not quite sure why i'm currently ex trying to get some other testing done to see if i might have anything else besides crps but something that's yeah. fairly common is um it can kind of, I guess, be overshadowed, but CRPS can overshadow anything else and doctors kind of don't want to look past that or all they see is, oh, you have CRPS, that's all that's happening. And so yeah. I've kind of experienced that a lot, that especially with it's my stomach, CRPS, the reason I got- Ignore it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, definitely. So the reason I kind of got thrown into the this, I mean, I feel the feeding tube so fast is every time I would go to a GI doctor, it was just kind of like, oh, you're just feeling your pain or something like that, or you're just very sensitive yeah. or something like that. So it's like I, I wouldn't really get a good true evaluation. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I actually, um, everything seemed fine for quite a while. And then we were kind of just thrown in with like, oh, you have 24 hours, you're in malnourishment, and it's severe, you have 24 hours to make a decision about a feeding tube. What yeah. kind do you want? So, and then... Wow. Um, yeah. What kind do you want? So they're sort of trying to change the uh, the the decision to you're gonna have one. <laughs> Just choose which one you want. <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, it was not an option at that point. Yeah. They, I did not have a choice. So because. Yeah. Twenty four. I mean, hours I, I guess choose, you can that's... deny medical treatment, but um. I, yeah, I could have, I suppose, denied it, but I mean, it was pretty much. Like I could have had an be silly if you a did. nasal feeding tube, um, wow. and that would have, but then I would have had to have it changed. Like you have to get it changed pretty often. Yeah. And there's just a lot that can go wrong with it, and I wasn't even sure I could get it down that they could get it down. Right. Uh, so there, there were just would have been a lot wrong with it, and yeah. Mm. So um. I went with a more permanent um, GJ tube. Um, and the surgery itself, I was a little worried because, um, you know, you're not supposed to have surgery if you have CRPS, if you can yeah, avoid it. If you can help it, yeah. So I was a little worried about it, but the surgery itself wasn't too bad and recovering from it wasn't too bad. Um, yeah. It, I felt like it did worsen the CRPS around my stomach a little bit, but not too bad. Um, so, yeah. Mm. yeah. Wow. That's so. a, it's quite a story. Have you had um, any other kinds of treatments? Have you tried ketamine infusions and mirror box or anything like that? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I've done, I did mirror box, but, um, I guess here it's more more kind of like maybe you'll get taught how to do it in physical therapy and then you kind of do it on your own. So yeah. I've I've done a little bit of mirror box therapy. Um, 
and I've had nerve blocks, and mm -hmm. I've had ketamine infusions. Um, those those are pretty helpful for me, um, but I don't know, kind of like nerve blocks didn't help. I mean, no what, nerve blocks. Didn't what about the ketamine infusions? Was that a, a temporary relief that just lasted a? a few days or weeks or something how did how did that help you out um ketamine has been great for me it's probably been one of the most beneficial treatments for me um yeah. it's just incredibly expensive and um insurance does not like to cover it so yeah. it requires a lot of arguing and insurance wants to make sure you've done everything else before you've done that um, yeah. and um, it's just very, very, very expensive. And um, I've actually done it high dose and low dose. Um, mm -hmm. Low dose did not work for me at all, but I know yeah. people that it has worked for. Mm -hmm. I, it's just very much individual, um, but yeah. high dose does work for me very well. Um, I get, immediate relief from it um cool it's it's pretty cool it's it's like um yeah like you ju you just feel great after or that's how i feel um yeah. but it's it's not forever it's kind of i don't know people call it like the ketamine merry-go-round like you just you you can't get off because you're it's never gonna be done yeah um, yeah Originally, I was nervous about trying it because I knew that once I tried it that I would have to get another one yeah. or I would have to get another set of infusions. It's not really one, it's not usually one day. It's usually a, a minimum of three days. Um, so and you, you here basically they... with the ketamine, it, it's uh, the drug is put into uh, a saline bag and put into a drip and you sit there and take yeah. that for would you say three days minimum yeah and um they they usually do it over four to five hours usually um wow. with an hour on each side so usually have about an hour of recovery um i mean yeah. it depends on the doctor but um that's usually how it goes the protocols are uh, they can vary a little bit but that's pretty yeah. much like i mean yeah. it can vary about mm -hmm. how much you're gonna get um, I'm at, out of most of the people I've talked to, I'm at one of the highest doses that I've ever heard. Um, yeah. so I don't really have room to go. Yeah. So, um, but it's been incredibly effective. Um, it helps with, I have pretty severe, um, spasms slash mm -hmm. seizures we don't really know apparently that's a new question it didn't used to be a question yeah um so they they can affect um anywhere in my body where well i have dystonia too where my limbs can like turn and contract um wow. and kind of like seize and tighten up but i also have spasms where my body can twitch uncontrollably for hours at a time and so yeah. when that happens it can affect um i guess the organs in my body and the way i understand it is that um like the nervous system is not responding to the muscles in your body correctly so your muscles mm -hmm. just kind of twitch uncontrollably um and one of the worst episodes i had is when I, get, I don't know if it was like my lungs or my diaphragm, I'm not really sure, but I wasn't able to breathe and no one really knew what was happening. Um, and I, ERs didn't know, doctors, no one knew. So eventually um, I just did a ketamine infusion mm -hmm. um, because no one could get my breathing stable. So, and it, it stopped it immediately. So okay. ketamine has been um, an integral part of my treatment. Um, yeah. but it doesn't, well, it's been helpful. Um, it doesn't, it hasn't reversed any of my symptoms, but no, it does, it's not, it's not it does keep things. 
No, yeah, no. It's it, a, I mean, it's a temporary fix, and it sort of helps to keep things at bay a little, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we kind of try and use it from for to try and stop things getting worse, but I mean, it's hard to do when you can only do it every so often. Mm. But um, so hopefully I'll have another ketamine infusion coming up in the next week or so, and I'm hoping that'll get me to the point where I can come off some more meds and try and up my feeds and get mm. me a little more stable. Um, although I'm not malnourished to the point where I need to be hospitalized or anything like that, I'm still not in a stable feeding position. Yeah. Um, so it makes it hard to kind of adjust my meds and it also makes it hard to do any kind of physical therapy or anything like that. Cause I'm pretty weak. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. So what's your, your home support like now? You, do you have a partner and family who help you out and drive you around? Do you drive? Um, um, you, I, I assume yeah, you so, probably need help getting dressed and, and showering and little things like that even. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, so when, um, when everything came back and I got really sick again, um, I had to move home with um, my parents yeah. and my partner um, moved in with me and she's my primary okay. caregiver. Um, yeah. And so she she takes care of me and I'm in um, a motorized wheelchair. So that's how I get around. I can't walk at all. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some days I have use of my hands and some days I don't. Um, yeah. So I do need a lot of care for everything um we yeah. get some she um she's able to help me through the ability of medicare um so sh she's able to stay home with me and take care of me but i need help with pretty much i mean i can like feed myself and stuff like that when i do yeah to eat but like yeah she help she helps me with a lot of things um so yeah, yeah um, it's good you've got the support there we you know we all need somebody around us <laughs> you know all the time uh, even if it's yeah. just for our sanity <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah definitely yeah. I, I mean it definitely also takes a toll on our families i think and i mean it's a hard disease to cope with in a lot of ways i think because mm -hmm. of the ways that can affect our emotions our bodies and um our sleep and mm. Um, I don't know the hospital trips and nobody understanding and yeah all of that it definitely takes a toll for sure yeah I, I couldn't imagine if this was my partner if my wife um, was in as much pain as me I I I am one that's very protective over her and I I would hate if I couldn't take it away from her you know what I mean that would really get to me and so I don't know how she yeah. feels, you know, about it with me, but um, I guess I've always been quite a strong person as well. I've always had a lot of pain tolerance, you know, yeah. no problem and stuff, yeah. you know, but yeah, I, I couldn't stand it if she was in my position. It would drive me nuts Yeah. as her partner, not being able to help her, not being able to understand. Yeah. 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 That, that's something we've talked about before too like if the roles were reversed that it would be yeah. really difficult but mm -hmm. um yeah i i think it's it's definitely a monster of a disease for sure but um one thing is that i have met probably some amazing people I mean, I definitely don't wish it upon anyone, and mm. um, but I've definitely met some amazing people yeah. um, through the support groups and all of that. I mean, I think that has been pretty cool. Yeah. Um, just about everyone I've interviewed has said that that the just the Facebook support groups and stuff like that, talking to other people in the same condition that understand that relate directly to you have really been beneficial to their you know mental sanity and, and yeah 
Yeah, for sure. It makes you feel you're not alone. It makes you feel you're not crazy. That, you know, this isn't you and your body only. <laughs> it's not you being yeah. weak. It's not you f not fighting enough. You know, it, it does yeah. help. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any, any last words of wisdom for those out there? Um, um, I guess definitely like I think it's important to fight for what you need and um, what um, the care you need. Um, a lot of the things I've fought for, I do end up getting um, mm -hmm. like through insurance or through other means, whether like you have to apply for, you know, if you have to go through a, some other way, if you need a grant or you can yep. find it through like state programs. I just think it like it's important to fight for the care you need and being a patient advocate is so important with this disease. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something I'm very, very passionate about. Um, I think initially I was kind of blindsided when my CRPS came back um, and mm -hmm. I just thought, well, like I've already been through this and it's not going to be a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. And that kind of wasn't the case. And I went in like kind of trusting the doctors and that I didn't need to do more research. And that just was not the correct attitude. Um, yeah. I think that it is important to be a patient advocate, fight for yourself and fight for the care you need and do the yeah. research on your doctors. And um, yeah, I mean, I, a lot of, what I needed, you know, was, I was like, first it was crutches and a wheelchair and all this stuff and insurance didn't want to pay yeah. and all of that. And it was, you know, after fighting for a few months, they did it. And then I had, yeah. I needed another wheelchair because I was getting sick. And it was like, it's just important to fight for what you need. Yeah. It's um, your body and it's your choice as well. When it comes to the physio yeah. and, and stuff like that. Don't let them yeah. let you do things you can't do. Cause, exactly. Yeah. And um, and and the thing is, like, when you get things like a wheelchair or whatever you need to, um, you know, continue your care, like, you're going to feel better about it because not only did you get it, but you're going to have this, like, freedom about you because you're going to yes. be able to get around or feel better. And it's just... Yeah. it's going to be more empowering. Um, and the reality of the situation is like, this is your body forever. Yeah. And it's the only body you've got. So yeah. for like, this is your new job is to take care of your body and it yeah. should be your main priority. Like don't put it on the back yeah. burner. So learn whatever you need to learn. And then I'm not here to tell you, you know, that you should do ketamine or you should do this or, no, no. but do you learn about it so that you know yeah. what there is to know and the options that are there for you and the treatments that are available so that you yeah. can make an educated decision. And when your doctor can propose them to you, you already know what there is to know. And if he only proposes yeah. one, one thing to you, you know that there's five other options. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing is like, if I had known that there were other options you know, yeah. or something like that. It's like, then you don't have to go back and if then. And I think that's really empowering to know that you made the decision when it was available to you. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, I think I think that's um, that's probably what I would. For sure. That's what I would say is to take to take your your health care into your hands. And yeah, I, I also don't think um, health care is just doctors I think it's you know taking care of what you eat and taking care to you know like nourish your body from every standpoint because this disease it's it's all encompassing and I think mm. a lot of what I've noticed as of late it's like okay if I can't do this how else can I take care of my body um, and like doctors aren't going to give you that information they're just not no. so I, no. I I think a lot of that is on us to figure out. Um, yeah. And 
you know, like one of the best things I've done for myself is to do yoga and, yeah. and like the, like, you know, doctors aren't going to give you that information, but, yeah. but you know, you have to do what's going to make you feel good. And I, I think that, that that's probably one of the best things you can do for yourself is, is yeah. take care of yourself. For sure. Hmm. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much, um, you know, for chatting with me and um, talking about your your personal life and stuff. It's it's been um, quite interesting. You've had a quite an experience since such a young age, and um, it's it's unusual as well. I know that CRPS is more unusual in uh, children and in people over the age of forty to actually initially get it. You know, so. Um, it'd probably be more common for children to get than it would be for people over the age of 40 to get, I think. But yeah, there seems to be an age group that you're more common to get it in and, and you've got it well outside that age group, you know, unfortunately. Um, and and I, yeah, I just want to wish you the best of luck for the for your future and, and everything else you go through. And um, you too. thank you very much. Right. And thanks for doing this this video. I think it'll be really helpful for a lot of people. Yes, I hope so. Yes. Uh, welcome, Chrissy. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me here, Fred. Cool. So you have CRPS. Um, I understand it's in your your leg. When you both your legs, is it? How did that yes. get started for yes. you? Um, I had a horse accident nine years ago. Um, mm -hmm. I was helping a girl put a rug on a horse and the horse just went crazy. And yeah. I ended up behind him. I still don't know how, I don't remember that bit. And I just looked down and these, his legs were just cons constantly kicking, kicking yeah. my, both my legs and my feet. Um, I was diagnosed with CRPS close to a year later yeah. um, and I went from working one day to not working ever again. Yeah. Um, so that's taken its toll on me. Um, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah, the CRPS, I can get flare-ups. Um, yeah. If I try and do something if I go out in the garden or if I walk for too long yeah. Um, yeah I just get flare-ups it takes me like three days to get over it um, my legs change colors <laughs> they go yeah. from gray blue purple red when I get a flare-up they're usually red swollen yeah and feel like they're going to explode Mm -hmm. um, and when the flare goes down again, I can see cracks of skin in my legs. So there is yeah. something going on there that, um, yeah, I, I still don't understand myself a lot about CRPS. Um, mm. I know the, I have a lot the doc of, I, the doctors I don't my... properly understand it. So as patients, we can only understand it to a certain level without having a yeah. degree. <laughs> you know, yeah. so don't expect to fully at... understand it anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's why yeah. it's called complex. Complex is the f is the first word for a reason. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. No, it's not nice. Mm. Um, yeah. So I've been unable to work for nine years now. Mm. Um, I suffer from depression because of it, because I've always been a worker. I have PTSD from the accident every time, like I have pain 24 seven. I didn't know that there was that many types of pain that you can have. Mm -hmm. I only thought there was like a couple of pains, like a stabbing pain or a dull pain or a throbbing pain, but there's so many other yeah. different pains that I yeah. never knew existed, but I have now. Um, yeah. Like, and they're so hard to describe sometimes as well. I mean, it is, it's, you, it you is, describe it, it like you've been stabbed or something, but the problem is, is most of us have never really been stabbed, so we don't really know what that feels like. 
but that's the closest you can liken to it you know yeah, at the like time sharp, with that like particular pain, pain you know yeah it's hard yeah. to describe mm. yeah i get like um pain that feels like there's lightning in my legs mm. going ch -ch -ch sort of thing um yeah stinging burning heat burning as well as ice cold burning yeah um i I don't know whether you get that. Yes, yeah. Um, because I, I, and ever since I've had this, my temperature changes. Um, yep. all of a sudden I'm sweating. Yeah. The next minute I'm freezing. Um, yep. and the cold's that bad that it's burning. It's painful. Yeah. I find the um, cold hurts a lot more than the hot. Uh, I get the same thing. Full body sweats. Yeah out of nowhere uh, dystonia or something there's, there's a there's a word for it um which d describes how it happens and sort of why or something like that but i can't find any treatment for it um yeah. or any way to, to stop the the body temperature fluctuations but i find the yeah. cold hurts for me particularly a lot yeah. more than the hot does. i i also find i've noticed myself that um I get that when the air pressure changes before the weather even changes. Mm -hmm. it, um, mm -hmm. I think it's the air pressure yep. um, set, sets it off as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can if I walk for too long, I get a flare up, and I'm in bed for three days. So. Yeah. Um, again, if I forget to take my medication. Um, over like say 12 hours then like if I if I go out if I go and visit someone for a couple of days and yeah I've, um, forgotten to take my medication then I'm stuck in bed yeah. um, until the medication kicks in mm -hmm. um, not a nice life <laughs> no but no. Um, I think I'm I know I know that I'm strong. Um, this has taught me that I'm a strong person. Um, I still get my down times where I get into a big black hole. I don't want to talk to anyone. Yeah. I don't feel anyone understands me and what I'm going through. I really find the CRPS support group is really, really good. Mm -hmm. I do mindfulness meditations, which I find helps me take my mind off um, off the pain yeah. um, and also it helps me to sleep better because I normally only sleep two or three hours at a time yeah um, I still I still get my normal sleep that um, like six to eight hours a day or whatever but it's usually in two hour blocks two mm. to three hour blocks yep so and it's broken a lot of the other time i'm feel like i'm just a zombie <laughs> yeah um, when i get a flare up i've got to take extra pain meds and they make me feel drowsy and like i want to fall yep. asleep and yeah um yeah zombie mode so what yes. kind of what kind of treatments have you tried then um, I've had ketamine infusions where I've been in hospital for five days and wow. had ketamine going through me 24 seven during those five days. And by the last day, my pain is down to like a one or a two, which okay. is like fantastic for me, you know, to be able to, um, feel like running and skipping out of the hospital. Yeah. Um, yeah. And wanting to do all the things that I haven't been able to do for nine yeah. years. And, um, yeah, it, the first time I had it done, it only lasted a few days because I fell off my uh, computer chair okay. and the pain just all came back again. <laughs> I was very disappointed about that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And seven months later, I had it done again. It did nothing. 
I had it done nine months later after that, but they did lignocaine infusions, a cu uh, um, spaced it in those five days, like the second day and the fourth day. Yeah. I had lignocaine infusions with the ketamine, and that gave me about six weeks relief, okay. which I thought was fantastic. Um, yeah. I had it done again last year, and I said to the hospital, I'm only going to get it done if it's done with lignocaine as well, because ketamine on its own is not working for me. Yeah. So, um, come to the third day I was there and I said to them when are you going to do the lignocaine infusion because um, you know it's the third day now they, and they told me oh we don't do lignocaine infusions here I was fuming because I wouldn't have gone there if if that if I'd known that mm -hmm. um, so I was quite upset about that and the I got the doctors to come in and I spoke to them about it. Um, they said, oh, we don't do it here. It only gets done at Clayton, um, at Monash. And I said, well, why wasn't I sent there? Mm -hmm. And they said they couldn't answer me. Um, anyway, so, so that didn't work. And they told me after that they won't be doing any more ketamine infusions that they're stopping the ketamine infusions um, in Victoria because um, patients aren't getting enough relief, which mm -hmm. I think is really bad because even to just have six weeks relief of not having many people, severe pain, many, many people would, would beg, beg for six right. weeks relief. Many of them would beg for half an hour relief let alone 24 right. hours or two days, but six weeks would be quite nice, a vacation yeah. from constant yeah. pain, yes. It, it was, it was a nice vacation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I felt like I was normal again and I was able to do things. Mm. Um, so yeah, I was really disappointed about that. Um, I, be, I believe now that you can get um, medicinal marijuana mm -hmm. and I spoke to my pain doctor about that and they told me that I was not qualified oh, I didn't qualify for that only they would only give it to cancer patients who were terminal and people with epilepsy mm -hmm. um, the children in particular then wouldn't it yeah yeah I find that really harsh and inhumane yeah <laughs> for us the RPS warriors. Yeah. Um, I mean, our, our disorder might not be terminal, but it is known as the suicide disease, um, and yes. it's given that nickname for a reason. You know, um, yeah. it's a very depressing thing for people to live through. So, yeah. giving them any kind of relief um, should be priority. You know. That's right. Um, since they can't, they know they can't cure it. All they can do is give us treatments to relieve us. You know, so yeah. I mean, the med as you said, the medical marijuana has just come out here in Australia for for legal use, and I'm not even sure which states it's in. And it's just in its early stages. They're not yeah. even growing it here yet for medical use. They're importing it still. So we can only hope that the system improves and they do expand yeah. it to. Um, chronic pain patients because um, there's plenty of other people with chronic pain syndromes, the fibro and all sorts um, who could possibly benefit from it. It doesn't help everybody, there's people who have tried it, it doesn't work, people have yeah. tried it and it does work, you know, there's people that are off of their meds for it because of it, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's an option that should be out there for sure. Yeah, I actually heard something um, this morning, I think it was on the television mm -hmm. about um, it was called Leaf something, Leaf Leaf Com or Leaf Can or something like that. Um, yeah. That there is someone growing medicinal marijuana here in Australia. Okay, cool. And I think it's in country Victoria somewhere. 
Yeah. Um, and that's in the early stages. Very yeah. good. But it's not, it's, I mean, it doesn't help us if we're not able to get it. To access it, that's right. Um, yeah. yeah. Properly and legally as well, you know. Um, and not only for the reason of it being legal, but for the reason of you get to choose the right strains to help you. Yeah. Like they have a certain one for epilepsy and stuff like that then they've mm. got them that work for pain as well. Um, yeah. So they can definitely grow strains that work for pain. With a lot of treatments, um, some treatments work for some people, some mm -hmm. they don't. You the found. early stages I was using, um, I was going to physio a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And the family was saying, oh, you're going to physio, you must be feeling great. N not. <laughs> like I was in there with tears rolling down my face because yeah. I was in so much pain from the physio working on my legs. Yep. Um, I've tried acupuncture, that didn't work. Um, I've tried different medications. I'm now on Lyrica mm -hmm. and um, Cymbalta, um, Endone, um, anti-inflammatories, um, uh, prox naproxen. Um, yeah. I need medication now to line my stomach, so, um, yeah. because the anti-inflammatories will um, give you ulcers. Yeah, so, the CRPS affects your, your organs as well. It's to do with the, the blood flow and stuff like that. Um, yeah. They've just found yeah, that I've, one out I recently. Find I, I get um, my temperature has changed dramatically since mm -hmm. I had this accident and was diagnosed with CRPS. I used to be cold all the time um, since I was little. Now mm. I can I'll, I can be dripping. Yeah. Um, I'm so hot and then I'm so cold and it's it's debilitating. It's mm. The cold pain is really, really bad yeah. um, when the air pressure changes mm -hmm. um, or if I do something um, too excessive, mm -hmm. then I get a flare up and I'm in bed for three days Yeah, with that. So I, I find the, I mentioned that before or not. I, I find the, the hot sweats uh, really give me fatigue. They 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 really drain me, so I'm about to sort of pass out as well, you know. They, yeah. 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 Really I actually you. have, and um, yeah. I've I've had three falls in the last six months. Um, yeah. One 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 of them, I actually collapsed and um, ended up in hospital for four days. Wow. Um, not allowed to drive. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, which is hard when you're used to being so independent and mm. then all of a sudden you have to rely on family to take yeah. you to your appointments. Yeah. Um, and you can't get away. You can't you can't go for a drive and, and sit at the sit sit at the beach or yeah. whatever, yep. you know, just to yep. get away and mm. get out of think your four about, walls. <laughs> Yeah, 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 but that's basically what it is, um, living within four walls at the moment, mm. um, not doing much, um, just going to my appointments mm. and taking my medication. That's... How is your family support? Do they um, understand um, CRPS? Do they believe in what you're going through? I don't... Uh, they don't. I, I know that they don't understand what I'm going through um, because it's invisible sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, Another really nickname for CRPS is the invisible Pardon? illness. Another yeah. nickname for CRPS, the invisible illness. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Has a few nicknames. <laughs> <laughs> Not nice nicknames. <laughs> no, no. Um, but they are true. Um, yeah, my family just don't get it. 
Mm. Um, I get my support from a CRPS Warriors um, Facebook page. Yeah. Um, I try and uplift people who, who are um, expressing their thoughts. Mm. And um, again, when I'm feeling like I'm in a black hole, I'll turn to that group yeah. and express how I'm feeling. And there's always someone on, on that group who is there to support you. Yes, yeah. And that's my greatest support is there. Um, those who I understand, have, those who go through the same, you know, the same conditions yeah. and, and, you know, it, it's, um, like you said, like we were saying before, you can't explain the kind of pain. So to have somebody who understands it without even attempting to explain it to them, yeah. It's just a relief, isn't it? <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, it is. Um, because sometimes you feel like that you're going crazy. Because mm. um, no one understands and you don't get why people don't understand. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there, there are groups out there that um, are very supportive. I have, I've met quite a few people through pain clinic through meditation groups that have all yeah. we all have we all suffer from different types of pain some by fibro crps um a guy who had a um motorbike accident mm -hmm. um who gets a lot of pain in his head he um he's he had like seven plates put in his head um wow. Yeah, so we quite often ring each other just to support each other yeah. because we get each other. Yeah. We understand yeah. what the others are going through. Yeah. Um, and I know I'm not alone. I know mm. I have the support from that group um, mm. more than my family. Yes. Which, which I find is really hard because... Um, even though my family love me and they care about me, they they still don't get what I'm going through and mm. keep saying to me to get over it and move on sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, that I know that's why I know that they don't understand. Yeah. By them saying that and it's very hurtful. But yeah. You can only, I can only give them so much information and if they don't yep. get it by reading the information, then I don't know what else to do. Yeah, you can't waste too much energy and effort and, and stress over trying to make other people understand. Sometimes yeah. you, you, you put in your effort, especially when it comes to family and friends, yeah. you, you need to try and make them understand. But if you get to a point where it feels like a brick wall, just stop, just accept that they don't understand you and yeah. you just have to say hi and bye and you know, have a general conversation, just don't talk about your CRPS if they bring it up, just, you know, try and move on I guess, you know, because yeah. it's, um, I find it, it also hard stress is not good, you know. No, I know, it, it, it makes you flare up when, when you're mm. stressed um, and I find um, going to family functions, I I try and avoid because mm. I've got nothing to say really. Yeah. Um, because I because I'm not living my life the way I should be. Um, that I feel like I've got nothing to say to them, and mm. um, and they ask, what, do you, what have you been like doing to, lately? Pardon. <laughs> Especially when they ask, what have you been doing lately? Yes. And you're thinking, yeah. well, I uh, got off my bed the other day and I moved into yeah. the lounge room for a good two hours. How was yeah. that? <laughs> you know, yeah. That was the highlight of my last two weeks. How about you? <laughs> That's another thing um, I'm, I'm trying to do is um, I'm giving myself 12 spoons a day. Yep. Um, imaginary spoons. Mm -hmm. And just to get out of bed takes one spoon. Mm -hmm. um, 
having a shower takes two spoons. Mm -hmm. Getting dressed takes two spoons. Um, going to an appointment that I'm, um, it takes me an hour to get there. I'm waiting and, and I'm, I'm, I'm only an hour there and it takes me an hour and a half to get back and I'm mm -hmm. completely um, a mess by the time I get home. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that takes so many spoons and when I get to <laughs> the rest 12 <laughs> spoons that I've used up, then that's it. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes I try and give myself more spoons, but then the next day I lose the spoons that I've taken yeah. from the day before. It takes longer to recover. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. From the simplest things to, you know. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I, another thing is um, I can't stand um, anything on my legs. Um, I can't stand weight on my legs. Mm -hmm. I can't stand, um, can't wear leggings or anything like that anymore. It has to be yeah. um, pants that have got more of a bell bottom, more of a flow on the bottom, L so that it's feeding. not touching my skin. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even having a shower is painful. Yeah. Um, just the water on my skin is painful. I don't know if you get that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, um, I have to cut the sleeves off of any long sleeve top I have. Um, it hurts to put my arm through whatever sleeve is left. Yeah. It feels like I'm running a very uh, rough file dragging it up my arm. That I'm surprised yeah, there's not scratches like and rolls. stuff there, you know, sometimes. And all it is is just yeah. material, you know. I get that because... Yeah. Um, it some it feels like um, raw uh, raw skin on rough sandpaper. Mm -hmm. That's how mm -hmm. I describe it. As yeah. someone's rubbing, you know, rough sandpaper on my raw skin. Yeah, the yeah, um, top layer has already come off, and and, yeah. and it's sitting there exposed. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So when you were kicked by the horse. Um, did it actually break any bones or anything like that? Tear chunks of flesh off? Did you have a surgery or anything? I didn't have surgery. I did have um, flesh wounds um, yeah. that I had to get dressed every day. Um, I didn't go to hospital, but I went to a 24 hour clinic at night, and um, the doctor there told me not to walk for two weeks, which was wrong because I should have kept walking. That's why I've yeah. developed the the RPS. Um, okay. I was told I went to different specialists and I was told I had um, um, compression syndrome or something and I had um, um, shin splints. Um, yeah. All sorts of different things um, until I went to a professor in the city um, and I'd had a flare up and he knew straight away what it was. Um, okay. And yeah, and he died me with the CRPS. Right, okay. Um, you mentioned before that you had um, post-traumatic stress yes. disorder from the actual accident. You have yeah. troubles um, being around horses then since that? Oh, def that definitely. I can't stand um, looking at pictures of horses, seeing horses, oh. driving, being behind a horse flush, um, yeah. fixing that. Um, I'm about to start a program with psychologists right. um, to work on the PTSD side of things, even yeah. though it's been nine years, <laughs> um, because yeah. it's really affecting my mindset and way my brain perceives things yeah um, sure. uh, is there anything else you would like um, to say to the viewers out there any any messages you'd like to leave for them um, just to please um, do do some research on PTSD and and try and understand 
everyone who's going through it because it's a debilitating disease and um, I think people need to be more aware of the effects that it has on people with PTSD and CRPS mm -hmm. and be a bit more compassionate <laughs> um, yeah. instead of just saying, oh, you'll get over it, move on sort of thing. It's yeah. not something we can move on from um, until there's a cure. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's the message I'd like to send out to everyone out there is to do some research and, and um, try and understand what we're going through because yeah. and I think and, and until you know, unless you know what real pain is, like for women it's easy to know because going through childbirth, yeah. um, CRPS is like 10 times worse. It's like living with it 24-7. Yeah. Um, women, I think, can understand it more than, than men. Yeah. Unless, of course, they do a because study. Of that at, experience. Yeah. Yeah. Unless yeah. they do a study and um, go through pretending they're going through labour. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which yeah. I've seen on television, and they yeah. only get to three on the pain scale, and then they say that's enough. <laughs> yeah, so right. If they can imagine their worst pain, um, having it twenty four seven, it's yeah. like three fourfold. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's like being a um, CRPS warrior. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. And that will just keep fighting until the end. We're, we're a strong species, us CRPS warriors. Yeah. Um, and if anyone out there who has CRPS and who is struggling to just get onto the Facebook page for CRPS sufferers, um, mm -hmm. there's always someone there that they can talk to to work things out um, yeah. when they're feeling like they're in a big black hole because yeah. we're all in this together. Mm. Yeah. It's the best people is the ones who understand you the most. That's you know, right. And and we all go up and down with our moods, but there's enough people there. You will find people that are in the right frame of mind to try and pick you up at the time. For sure. Yes. Mm. And that's what we need. Mm. Yeah. We need, we need as much support as we can get, mm. especially Absolutely. in those bad times. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. thank you very much for talking to me. It's, um, it's been, been quite... a pleasure, Fred. Yes, yeah. No, it's been uh, quite interesting listening to your story. Um, we appreciate it very much. Thank okay. you. No yeah. Worries. All right. Thanks so much, Fred. Well, Bye.